What is up, y'all? Today we're talking about Greg O'Gallagher, also known as Kino Buddy, the bad, the good, and the Hollywood. So I want to start with the bad, just because I want to end on a good note. And there is some good, right? It's certainly not all bad in this case. And so Greg advocates getting down to a very, very low body fat percentage in order to show, you know, the striations, the vascularity, the definition, etc. And this is all well and good, but it has a number of drawbacks that he doesn't seem to talk about very often. And he dubs this quite incessantly as the Hollywood look. However, there are a number of problems with this. First, a lot of movie bodies, Hollywood celebrity, movie, what the, f anyway, they are not 8%. They're not even 10%, okay? If you look at Henry Cavill in Superman, who he used in this short video clip, he's not 10%. He's not even 12%. He's probably more like 14 to 15%. And Hollywood... Guess what? They use a lot of tricks to make the actors appear better and leaner than they actually are. Stuff like angles, stuff like lighting, stuff like manipulating their body water, stuff like getting a pump before shooting. This is not reality, and maybe, just maybe, it's not a very good goal. Greg is pushing this whole leaner is better thing pretty damn hard. Here a comment says 8% is a grind for most people though, which is absolutely true no matter how they set up the diet. There is no secret way to diet down to 8% body fat. This is just marketing. Another comment says it's hard for an average dude to sustain 8% year round. Absolutely true. Okay. Very, very, very. Chuck a few more varies in there. Few men can maintain 8% and feel even okay. Most will feel like shit. Maybe one guy in a thousand will actually feel good naturally at 8% body fat. And a lot of the trouble is that people don't know how lean 8 or 10% body fat is. It is very, very lean. You can look phenomenal at 14, 15, 16% if you have enough muscle. Again, Henry Cavill, He's not 8%, he's not 10%, he is like mid-teens. Seriously. Another comment says, my body fat is 6, but still not looking like them. I think bulking is important first. And Kino Body says, 6% is very good. Yeah, is it though? I mean, if you don't have this look and you're 6% body fat, is that good? If you disappear when you're wearing clothing, as most naturals will when they're that lean, is that good? And just by virtue of being a big channel the vast majority of viewers are going to be beginners, especially when you cater to very, very young audiences like Greg does with his style of marketing. Let's put it that way. I'll be as nice as possible. <laughs> so you have a bunch of guys who are probably very, very weak in the gym. They are maybe lean, maybe somewhat lean, and the advice is always cut, 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 cut. Go down, go down. You got to get lean for your muscles to pop. You don't have muscles to pop. There's nothing to actually show. You can't carve a pebble. Also, a lot of movie stars, this might surprise you. This might shock you. You don't, you don't want to sit down, lean in a little bit. They're not natural. They're on the drugs. Okay, this could be anabolic steroids. This could be stimulants. It could be stuff to boost up their metabolism. It could be stuff to lower their appetite. Sometimes they might not even know they're on them, okay? You have the celebrity trainer who's like preparing all, the, all their meals. Oh my God, I did their workouts and I got shredded while gaining a ton of muscle. And so they might actually have plausible deniability. They might say oh, like, yeah, yeah, I didn't take anything at all. But they did. Furthermore, they might not even be able to sustain it. There are a lot of actors, they get shredded for a movie role. They don't stay that way. What makes you think you're gonna get shredded and stay shredded when you don't even have the motivation of millions of dollars on the line. They can't even sustain it, the Hollywood look. What makes you think you can just from skipping breakfast and drinking a black coffee? And a lot of people, Greg included, they don't know how to analyze body fat percentage. Greg doesn't really know what body fat percentage is. He is still persuaded that he is below 10%. I think I saw a video recently of him saying he was 6%. I think the one part of his body that's 6% body fat is his feet. And even that is a toss-up. 
meaning that he's going to give advice to people based on body composition when he doesn't understand what body composition is, and that's dangerous. Any big natural, any strong natural is going to have to pack on, pack on some fat at some point or the other. Doesn't mean that we have to walk around like walruses, but if you insist on people staying shredded, you are just going to sacrifice their potential. Usually three, four, five percent or more off. You would get down to how much, what percent body fat? I was 0.33. And it's always on the optimistic side. Funny how that works. So at 12 weeks out, how much body fat do you think you were carrying around then? Uh, about 3%. So three was a high? That's the highest, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> so anytime I get someone who is claiming to be a certain body fat percentage, if I do not have pictures, I give them five extra percent. Okay? So if someone is claiming to be 8% body fat, they're probably 13. Again, if there's pictures, I'll assess those pictures. No pictures, just the claim. I add 5% in every single case. And there are a lot of people who are arguing how sustainable 10% body fat is when they have literally never been 10% body fat. They're 15% body fat, they have a little bit of abs, maybe some definition somewhere, they're 15% body fat, and they say, oh yeah, I can sustain 10% because they're lying to themselves. For example, most in-body scans that I see, they're just not right, okay? It'll be 6% and they have like pretty good abs, but they're not 6%. 6% is absolutely fucking diced. My favorite is when someone argues in favor of 10% body fat, and then I'm like, send me a picture. They send me the picture. Yeah, you're 15% body fat. Everything you said is actually arguing in my favor. And then they're like, well, I did the Navy method where it measures waist and the neck size. If I do the Navy method, it gives me a body fat percentage of like 3% when I'm like 11%. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> 12%. No, no, and even though DEXA is the gold standard, it's still going to have a margin of error. So if someone gets a DEXA scan, it spits out 6.1% body fat, and they say, oh, I am 6.1% body fat. You don't know that, okay? And you're betraying that you don't actually understand how the system works, okay? It's good. It should give you a range. It spits out a number because most people are dumb and can't actually conceptualize that the machine doesn't know. The only way to truly know your body fat percentage is to take all the molecules of fat cut them off of you, put it on a fucking scale, and weigh that. You don't see that happen very often because, you know, uh, you die. Wow. It was negative numbers. <laughs> Furthermore, even DEXA is not that accurate. Uh, for example, Steve Hall, he got a DEXA and he was like 10 or 11%, and then Kinobody got a DEXA and he was like 6.1%. It just doesn't add up, okay? So depending on how you calibrate the DEXA machine, it could be 4 or 5% off, if not more. Some of his claims are also a little bit out there. Like he says, many of these people have been losing 8 to 10 pounds of fat per month on average and feeling incredible. It's because we've set up the diet in a certain way to make eating at a deficit easy and effortless, okay? I'm calling bullshit on that, especially as you're getting towards 8%. There's no way you're going to be losing 8 to 10 pounds of pure fat per month, okay? That's just 2 to 2.5 two pounds of fat per month when already lean. Maybe if you're 20, 25, 30% body fat, sure. But if you're really going for this Hollywood look and pushing down below 10% body fat, you really have to be more conservative with your deficit. And this is just a pretty ridiculous claim in my opinion. You also have to keep in mind that a lot of transformations, they're not sustainable. So someone might crash diet from 20% down to 8%, sure, and you get the cool picture. And if you are a coach who doesn't really give a fuck about your client, you might say, yeah, 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 keep going. I know you're 12% and you already don't feel that great, but keep going to 8% because 8% does look different from 12%. You do get all that definition, the striations, the vascularity, and it does look way, way more impressive. And yeah, you're going to get more likes. It's going to be what drives your business. But is that good for the client? In almost every case, the answer is no, okay? Because you don't see what happens after, and almost always, you get this big old rebound. Not always, but super, super common. Again, if the Hollywood celebrities can't maintain this, what makes you think you can? I'm not just some chubby guy who's never been lean. 
I've been down there, okay? I've had veins in my abs, all in the middle of my abs. I've had Christmas tree. I've had strided glutes. I'll spare you those pictures. I've had feathered quads. I've had all that shit, okay? It's nice. Uh, it will get the attention, okay, of other dudes. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Not women. They don't care about that. Maybe because they are inherently attracted to men who can actually have a functional penis. And I'm also not promoting, you know, everyone go to 20% body fat, everyone eat whatever you want, healthy at any size, okay? No, I'm promoting moderation, okay? Most men, you'll do best targeting somewhere in the 12 to 18% body fat range. And there's a big difference between 12% and 8%. Visually, yeah, but also in terms of how you feel. Most men will not feel at their best at 8% body fat, and good luck progressing in strength at that level. But 12%, yeah, life is great, progression is pretty good, everything should be very, very on point in terms of your balance and how you feel and your sleep and hormones and everything else. 8% for most men, it's a pipe dream. And if you don't look good at 14% body fat, which by the way is roughly the 99th percentile of leanness compared to the general population, not Instagram, one of three things is happening. First, you're not 14% body fat, you're much higher and you're just confused. Second, you don't have enough muscle mass and you would be better focused on gaining that rather than just cutting down to 18% and realizing that, hey, you don't have that much muscle mass to begin with. Or behind door number C is you have seriously crippling body dysmorphia and you need to get that taken care of. And by the way, Greg, you're not helping with that. What's it saying, my precious, my love? I'm trying to look like a movie star. Don't really focus on getting bigger and bulking up. Until we come to... Focus on cutting down to 8% and that's where you'll look insane. No. Not very nice at all. However, there is some good stuff. It's not all bad. This guy is not V-Shred, okay? You know, he does have some good advice. The first is an emphasis on compound movements. So he's not just like, you know, ah, feel the squeeze, that kind of thing. No, he's talking about these big basic movements as well as, number two, progressive overload. So he does emphasis, emphasize getting stronger over time, which I do think is very important. And again, some people tend to overlook this, and I think it is very important. He also does emphasize calories in and calories out. So even though he does promote fasting, he's not like, ah, oh, calories don't matter or anything like that, at least from what I have seen. If you start reducing your calories in, what your body is simply going to do is reduce the calories out. He also does emphasize the sustainability and the enjoyability of your diet. I just think that his end goal is way, way too optimistic for the vast majority of men. Also, he does seem pretty chill. I used to think that uh, he was kind of just a giant douche, but uh, he's all right. I think it's just a marketing persona that he puts on, you know. And sometimes you look into his eyes as he speaks to you looking at the camera and it feels like he's looking through you, which is a feat because the fuck, I'm not in front of you. How are you doing that? Some guys yell at the camera, some guys just, become king douche when they're doing their marketing stuff. Uh, I watched an episode of the Brains and Gains podcast with Dave McConey. Um, and they, you know, they had a nice conversation. He seemed very down to earth, gave legit training advice. So uh, that did change my opinion on him a little bit. He's also very self-aware. A lot of people in the fitness industry can't take criticism at all. But, you know, he, it's clear that he reads the jokes about him and the memes and stuff like that. And then he, uh, you know, incorporates it into his own marketing, which I appreciate. I also do believe that he is natural. There's never a way to know 100% for sure, but I've been asked this a lot. And given his progression and his physique and his level of strength and everything else, I do think he is likely, perhaps perchance, maybe all natural. One of the posts that he posted recently, good sentence there, they said, uh, five things that I learned from Kinobody over the years. No need to kill yourself in the gym to get a good physique. 100% agree. Progressive overload is key, absolutely. When it comes to calories and macros, making sure I eat enough carbs and fats so that my hormones stay healthy, boom, spot on. 10K steps a day, absolutely. Enjoying life is effortless when we fall into a good habits and a good routine. So I'm not criticizing his training system. 
I think that is a very fine way to train, especially if you are, are on a more time constrained budget. My main issue is promoting excessive leanness when the vast majority of men are not going to feel great at that body fat percentage, no matter how they diet or eat or train. 8% body fat, let alone 6% body fat, is just not a realistic expectation, and he's not helping here. So uh, yeah, that's it. The good, the bad, the Hollywood, etc. Definitely grab a copy of my book if you enjoy this video has lots of great information that can help your progress in the gym. Like, subscribe, share, like just do all the YouTube stuff that, that people tell you to do or don't do it. It's all up to you. I don't I, I honestly, I'll never know the difference. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.